Hey to you. I want to welcome you to another episode of How I Animate Clip Studio Paint. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about how to make a vintage overlay inside of Clip Studio Paint. There's no Photoshop, no outside help. This is all inside of Clip Studio Paint. This style of overlay can be used for your animations or your final drawings just to give it that rustic look if you're doing something like a flashback memory inside of your animation, something like that, or just to make your final image look like an old photo. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's get straight into it. All six of these steps that it's gonna take will be in the description below. So if you wanna rewatch this video and skip around, you can do so. So you just go straight down into the description. Okay, let's get into step one. Bring in your animation or your image or whatever. And the first step is we're gonna bring in a new adjustment layer. We're gonna go to layers, new correction layers, and we're going to go to level correction. The first thing we're gonna do is bring some reds in. Bring the reds up, I mean. We're gonna take the far right tab and bring it over to the left. So you see those reds in the lights. So now we have that. We're gonna go to the blues, and we're gonna bring that far left tab and bring it over to the right. And what this is doing is just bringing up the blues in the shadows. Now, it's a bit different when a regular, with a regular image, a regular photo, because it's more detail, but the purpose serves the same, same interest. We're trying to get to the same place. Okay. So now that we have that, you don't have to do anything else to that layer. Let's move on to the next step. The next step is to add some noise. So we're going to create a new layer, new rasterized layer, and we're going to use the fill tool. I'm going to take this fill tool and fill this layer with a regular neutral gray, somewhere in there. It don't have to be perfect. I'm going to take this neutral gray and we're going to add noise to it. So you go to filter, render, purling noise. I don't know, I hope I'm saying that right. But we're gonna bring the scale down to eight and we're gonna bring that amplitude down to 90. You could leave it at, oh, I'm sorry, not 90. It should be point 0.90. So I bring it down to 0.90. You can leave it at one if you want to. And then we're gonna change the layer blending mode to overlay. And then we're gonna change, bring the opacity down to 33. You can just type that if you want to, in if you want to. Okay, now that we have that done, you can see it starting to come together, the tone and stuff like that. Let's move on to step three. Okay, so for step three, what we're gonna do is bring in a paper texture. Now, to bring in this paper texture, you're gonna have to get something offline. I put a link down in the description to this paper texture. It's just balled up paper. You can download this for free. I'm not sponsored or anything like that. And so how I do, sometimes when I don't wanna download it, I'll just right click and then copy image. And then I'll come back over to the program, edit and paste. So now that I have my paper texture to overlay, I'll just put it over the top and click OK. OK, so now that I have that in there, what I want to do is bring down the saturation completely. So we're going to go back into these layer adjustments and bring up hue and saturation. Come to the saturation bar tab, bring it all the way down, right? And now that I got the saturation all the way down. I'll just combine these two. Okay, so now that I have that, I wanna change this to screen and I want to invert this image. I wanna invert the paper. So to invert the paper, you hit Control plus I. It can be Command I on a Mac, if you have this on a Mac. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring the opacity down to 19%. So it's just barely, you can barely see it, all right? Now that we have that, we're gonna move on to the next step. So here goes the next step. And the next step is something I've never told anybody about, never told you guys about, but you're gonna learn it today. And that's the gradient map. 
So to do the gradient map, we're gonna come back over here to our layer adjustments again and go to gradient map. So now what we wanna do is make sure we click in on the color to the far left. Make sure that tab is all the way over there and we're gonna change this color. And we wanna change this color to a cool color. Cause this is again going for the shadows. So a cooler, let me do something in this area. Some cool colors. Then I'm gonna drop that there. And then I'm gonna change this far right tab to a warm color. So like an orange or something, like a reddish orange. All right. Let me lighten that up just a little bit more. All right. And we're gonna click OK. And we're gonna just bring this down to a opacity of, let's try 39, there we go. So that helps with bringing out more of the shadows and then fading out the color a little bit. So let's now that we have that, let's move on to the next one. And these are basically bonus tips. You basically have it here, but if you wanna bring it up a little bit more and do a little bit more to make it look rustic and old, you can do these last few steps. Okay, this next step is to bring up the vintage feel of the image or animation. So you're gonna create a new rasterized layer and we're gonna bring in this maroonish looking color. Let me open it and you can see the code right here. Pause that and get that code and you can drop that in there or you can grab your own maroonish looking color. You're gonna take the fill tool and go ahead and drop that in over the image and change the blending mode to lighten. And we're just gonna drop it back just a little bit. Let's drop it back to like 46, that works. Okay. So the next thing we wanna do to finish out the wash is create one more layer. And this layer right here is gonna be a white layer layer of the white color. Use the fill tool, fill it in, and I want you to create two of these. So let's right click, duplicate that layer. Let's turn the second one off. We'll come back to it. We're gonna come back to the layer we're gonna work on now, and we're gonna use overlay. Let's bring this down to, I don't know, maybe, we'll see what 30 looks like. Okay, I'm filling 25. Okay, 25, and then we're gonna come over to this second white layer that we created, and we wanna select the layer. Select the layer by holding the command control, command or control, either one, and then click on the box of the layer. It automatically is gonna select it. And then we're gonna come over to select, shrink selected area, and we're gonna do 20 pixels. Okay, so that's gonna shrink it down by 20 pixels and all we need to do is hit the delete button. Boom. Now deselect, if you wanna know how to deselect, you hit select, deselect here, already done it but with the shortcut. Okay, and we just wanna bring this down to about 89%. And there you have it. That is your vintage style overlay for your animations and all of that stuff. You can take this overlay and actually put it into a Adobe Premiere or whatever other programs you wanna do, um, do your animations in or clean them up or finish them up. But you can do all of that stuff that you do in Photoshop right here inside of CSP. It's not just a drawing thing. It enhances all things too. It's not Photoshop, but it's for artists. This is for artists. So I just wanted to get that information out there. If this helped you, please share it with somebody. And as always, Animate Life Forever.